Welcome everyone. This new guide video will teach you how to use the Charge Blade in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The Charge Blade is a transforming weapon that will build up energy in its sword and shield mode, and can either unleash them as powerful energy blasts in its axe mode, or power up its axe mode to deal more damage. I will cover every part and mechanic of this weapon, here's a brief look at the chapters that I am going to cover. As usual, I play the game with a mouse and keyboard, check your equivalent controls with this table if you use a controller. The PC column includes keys for base world as well as Iceborne. Now, let's start with the guide. Firstly, the charge blade has two modes. A sword and shield mode, which I will refer to as sword mode for this video. And a two-handed axe mode. Let's look at some general differences between the two modes. In sword mode, attacks are fast but generally deal less damage per hit and have a shorter attack range. With the shield, you are also able to use guard. Blocking incoming attacks when necessary. Blocking costs stamina. Powerful attacks can also knock you back and deal chip damage even when successfully blocked. Keep in mind that blocking attacks with the charge blade will drain sharpness, more knockback results in more sharpness loss. Like any blocking weapon in the game, your blocking capabilities are affected by the guard and guard up skill. There are also various charge blade moves that will improve your blocking power, such as charging your shield and using guard points but details will be given later. In sword mode, you have normal movement speed, and your roll dodging speed is normal too. After attacks, your left and right dodges become side steps. You are also able to side step after various actions in sword mode. In axe mode, your attacks are slightly slower but would generally deal more damage per swing. Your attack range is also greatly increased. However, your movement speed would become slower. Roll dodging would also suffer a slight delay between each roll, so you will not be able to chain your rolls as quickly as before. You also lose the ability to block attacks since you no longer have a shield. In short, the sword mode has higher mobility and defensive capabilities, while the axe mode sacrifices mobility and defense for more attack range and damage. All weapon attacks in both modes will deal cutting damage. Next, let's look at how to switch between the two modes. There are multiple ways to switch between the two modes, and many of these are integrated into the combos. However, we will first look at the two basic ways of switching between the two modes, which can be done freely at any given time. Switching from sword mode into axe mode, will perform a morph slash that hits once with the axe and has a slight forward movement. Switching from axe mode into sword mode, will perform a morph slash that hits once with the sword and has a slight forward movement too. Next we will look at the draw attacks. If your weapon is sheathed, you can ready your weapon in sword mode without attacking. Adding a direction will use the forward slash as your draw attack, which will hit once with the sword and move you forward, putting you in sword mode. You can also use a draw attack directly into axe mode, hitting once with the axe, and moves you forward slightly, similar to the morph slash when switching from sword to axe mode. You cannot enter axe mode without attacking. Before we move on further with the individual attacks of each mode, we must first understand the file system, which is unique to the charge blade and makes up a big part of this weapon's gameplay loop. Files are basically bottles found at the top left. There are five files by default, but the capacity boost skill will give you one additional file, making it six in total. These files represent an energy source generated and stored in sword mode, and unleashed as attacks to deal damage in axe mode. There are two types of files impact files, and power element files. Impact files look like yellow electricity, they ignore hit zones and deal fixed damage to every part of the monster. Impact files can stun monsters with enough hits to the head. The damage of impact files can be improved by the artillery skill, 
Feline Bombardier Canteen Buff, and improving overall raw damage. Power Element Files deal pure elemental damage that are affected by elemental hit zones. Meaning they deal more damage to parts weak to that element, and zero damage to parts that are immune to that element. They follow the element of the weapon itself, which are fire, ice, thunder, water, and dragon. The damage of elemental files can be improved by increasing the weapon's elemental damage. The file type is tied to the weapon, and some weapons can deal elemental damage for weapon strikes, but carry impact files, so be sure to check the file type. Non-elemental, hidden element, and status weapons will always carry impact files. Regardless of file type, file damage is not affected by sharpness, and not affected by affinity since files cannot score critical hits. Unlike attacks from your weapon strikes, files do not do cutting damage. Firstly, let's talk about how to build up and store files. While you are in sword mode, all your sword attacks will contribute to file buildup. The charged double slash will provide the most file buildup, while the shield thrust provides the least buildup. Successfully blocking with your shield will also contribute to file buildup. Once you build up enough file energy, the empty bottles will turn yellow. Further file buildup will turn the empty bottles red. Before they can be used, the energy needs to be stored into the bottles first. This action is called charge files in the game, but in this guide I will call it store files to avoid confusion with other charging actions. Yellow would store up to 3 files, while red would store up to 6 files. Stored files are ready to be used, and appear as fully filled white bottles. You can continue to build up files while the bottles are already filled, this is just pre-charging the next batch of files, so if you spend all your stored files, you can immediately store another batch of files. This is known as double charging. If the bottles are already red, and you continue to build up file energy without storing them, it will overheat your sword. The bottles will now glow in a bright red color. In this state, all your sword attacks will be deflected, no matter where you hit. Overheating will not affect attacks from your shield and axe. To stop the overheating, you simply need to store the files. Trying to store files without reaching at least yellow bottles will result in a slower animation that stores nothing. Next up we will talk about how to spend the stored files. Files can be used in different ways but are primarily used to deal extra damage with axe attacks. However, not every axe attack would interact with files. To put it simply, all left mouse attacks in axe mode do not interact with files. While all right mouse attacks in axe mode will consume stored files to deal file damage. We will look into the details for all the axe attacks and their combos in a different section. But for better understanding of the upcoming parts, we must first focus specifically on this attack, which is known as the Amped Element Discharge or AED. The AED hits once with the axe. If stored files are available, it will consume one file to deliver three hits of file damage to the part hit by the axe. The AED moves you forward and will always force you back into sword mode after the move is completed, which is an animation you cannot cancel. It swings forward from your left, so it is easier to hit the monster's head if it is used from the front or left side of the monster instead of their right. Here are a few ways to use the AED. While in axe mode, use double mouse to directly use AED. Double mouse after any axe attack, except for rising slash. Right mouse after an element discharge combo. In sword mode, double mouse after a shield thrust. The shield thrust can be used after sword attacks and storing files. You can also get the AED by using a double mouse after successfully blocking attacks, 
as long as the knockback is not too strong. While using an AED, before swinging the axe forward, the hunter will first take a step back and pull the weapon back, and the weapon splits open behind the hunter. It is important to remember this specific animation. For this video, I will call this moment the cancellation point. Using specific inputs during the cancellation point will allow you to cancel your AED into different attacks with different purposes, such as powering up your shield or axe. Firstly we will look at how to power up your shield, or in simpler words, charge your shield. During the cancellation point, you can quickly use the guard input to cancel the AED into an elemental round slash instead. The elemental round slash moves you forward in a spinning sword attack that hits once and puts you in sword mode. As long as there are any stored files available, the elemental round slash will consume all stored files to charge up the shield, depicted by the shield glowing pink. The shield stays charged for 30 seconds for each file used to charge the shield. Six files would charge it for 180 seconds, which is the duration cap. You can recharge it before it expires to top up the duration, but it will never exceed the duration cap. Without capacity boost, you only have five files so the duration cap is 150 seconds. You can extend the duration using the power prolonger skill, level 3 would boost the duration to 42 seconds per file used, which also raises the duration cap. The shield icon will start blinking when you only have one file worth of duration left before it expires. You are still able to cancel your AED into elemental round slash if you do not have stored files, but obviously that will not charge your shield. Charging your shield is an important step and should always be prioritized, never play the charge blade without charging your shield. Here are all the benefits that come with charging your shield. Firstly, a charged shield improves your blocking power. This will stack with blocking power improvements from the guard skill as well as guard points. Secondly, speaking of guard points, successfully using a guard point with a charged shield will deal one hit of file damage to the monster if it's near enough. This only happens with guard points and not regular guarding, and the shield has to be charged. Again, I will explain guard points later in its own chapter. Thirdly, using the shield thrust with a charged shield will do one extra hit that deals file damage, but this move no longer contributes to file build up. Fourthly, charging the shield will increase the damage of all your axe attacks, including file damage from those attacks. Lastly, charging your shield also unlocks two new abilities, the SAED, and the ability to charge your sword, let's look into these in detail. Firstly, the SAED. When your shield is charged, your AED will automatically be replaced with the SAED, the Super Amped Element Discharge. This powerful axe attack starts with a right-to-left swing that hits once, followed by an overhead slam that hits twice, far in front of you. This is followed by a powerful discharge that releases all stored files as energy explosions that travel forward, dealing one hit of file damage for every file used. If there are no stored files available, the overhead slam only hits once. Impact files travel forward in a straight line. Power element files travel forward in an expanding cone shape. Here's a look at all the different elements. This move also moves you forward and forces you back into sword mode when completed, which is an animation you cannot cancel. Since the SAED replaces the AED, it can be accessed exactly the same way. The SAED has the highest damage output in a single move, but takes a long time to complete, and will always consume all the remaining stored files available. This may not be ideal for some situations. Luckily even when your shield is charged, 
you can still cancel your SAED back into the AED which is faster and only consumes one file. You can do this by using a backwards plus left mouse input during the cancellation point. The last benefit of charging your shield is unlocking the ability to charge your sword. While storing files, you can hold the left mouse button and release at the right time to perform the condensed element slash, which will slam the sword down for one hit along with two hits of file damage. This action also charges up your sword for 45 seconds, depicted by the sword icon glowing pink, and will start blinking when the charged sword has 15 seconds left before it expires. The charged sword duration can be extended by power prolonger, Level 3 will charge the sword for 63 seconds. With a charged sword, all sword attacks will now be accompanied by an extra hit that deals file damage. A charged sword will also prevent your sword attacks from being deflected, even when your sword is overheated. An overheated sword that is charged will have no hit lag, leading to faster attacks, but will drain more sharpness. To properly perform the condensed element slash, Hold the left mouse button until the shield shrinks to this size, and release immediately. The focus skill can speed up this charging animation slightly. If you do not hold the left mouse button, or release it too early, or too late, you will perform a weaker return stroke instead, which will not charge your sword. This return stroke only hits once if the shield is not charged, but will deal one extra hit of file damage if the shield is charged, regardless of the charged sword. While a charged shield is required to charge your sword, the duration and effect of the charged sword is not affected by the shield charge. The sword can even stay charged for its remaining duration if the charged shield expires first. You do not actually need files to charge your sword, but keep in mind that the storing animation is slower when you store no files. A charged shield is the only requirement to charge your sword. However, you can still use the condensed element slash if your shield is not charged, but it will only hit once and does not charge your sword. Next we will look into individual attacks and combos for each mode, starting with sword mode. Firstly, we will look at the charged double slash, which is the best sword attack for building up file energy, and deals good damage too. As the name suggests, this attack hits twice and the first hit deals more damage and builds up more file energy, but landing both hits would be ideal. Unlike other attacks, this attack needs to be charged by holding down on the right mouse button and releasing it the moment you see a red glow on the hunter. The focus skill can speed up this charging animation slightly and also increase the amount of file buildup. If you do not charge the attack, or release the button too early, or too late, you will get the weaker charged rising slash that only hits once, which has much lower damage and file buildup as well. You cannot use the charged double slash back to back unless you reset your combo. The charged double slash can be chained into the spinning slash. The spinning slash is the second best attack for building up files and dealing damage, hitting once and moving you forward. You can also get the spinning slash from a basic 3-hit combo using the left mouse, starting with the weak slash, into return stroke and then spinning slash. The first attack can be replaced with a forward slash by using a double mouse input instead, this is the same forward slash used as the draw attack we previously discussed, and will move the hunter forward. The spinning slash can also be used after a condensed element slash. You can also use the spinning slash after a slinger burst in sword mode which I will explain later. Using left mouse after a side step also gives you the spinning slash. Using left mouse after a forward roll will give you the return stroke instead. Using left mouse after a backward roll will instead give you the weak slash, which is just the usual left mouse attack. After any attack in sword mode, Right mouse plus directional keys will give you the sliding slash. The sliding slash hits once and will move the hunter towards the chosen direction, allowing you to reposition. You can also use the sliding slash after a side step. The sliding slash can often be used purely for positioning without trying to hit the monster.
After any attack, Double Mouse will give you the Shield Thrust. The Shield Thrust hits twice and builds up the least file energy. If the Shield is charged, this attack will also generate an additional tick of file damage, but this attack will no longer build up any file energy. The Shield Thrust can also be used after storing files, which is useful for immediately using your stored files for various purposes. Speaking of storing files, here's a quick refresher for something we already talked about. Holding the left mouse while storing files can give you the condensed element slash. Tapping left mouse gives you the return stroke. I will not repeat the details, feel free to go back to the charged sword section if you forgot the details. Using right mouse after storing files will immediately morph into axe mode and attack with the element discharge 1. Which is the perfect timing to move on to the next section, which are the axe attacks and combos. As previously mentioned, left mouse attacks in axe mode do not interact with files. Neutral left mouse gives you the rising slash. This is an upward swing that hits once and moves you forward slightly, this attack can hit very high up. The rising slash is good in general due to its speed and reach, but will launch your teammates into the air if you hit them, this often becomes a problem in multiplayer. Although sometimes you can try using it to save your teammates from paralysis, or when they are pinned to the ground. Forward left mouse gives you the dash slam. This attack will move you forward before slamming the axe down in front of you, hitting once with a good amount of damage. The forward movement is pretty fast compared to just walking forward in axe mode, making it a very useful attack for closing the gap and hitting monsters that are too far from you. It can be strategically used to avoid attacks without dodge rolling. The overhead slash is a downward axe attack that hits once, and can only be used after a rising slash with the left mouse button. Left mouse after overhead slash will lead back to rising slash, becoming an endless loop of upward and downward swings. Dash slam can be chained into rising slash, and after the overhead slash, you can add a forward direction to use dash slam again. Now onto the right mouse attacks which will consume files to do extra damage if there are any stored files available. Neutral right mouse gives you the element discharge 1. This is a right to left horizontal swing with a low hitbox, and will hit once with the lowest damage of all axe attacks. If there are stored files available, it will consume one file to deal one hit of file damage to the part hit by the axe. This attack will not move you. Forward right mouse gives you the rushing element discharge 1, which is essentially the same attack, except you will take one step forward. Aside from being the first right mouse attack, the element discharge 1 can also be accessed by using right mouse after storing files as mentioned earlier. Using right mouse after an overhead slash will also give you element discharge 1. Using left mouse after element discharge 1 leads back to rising slash. Using right mouse again after element discharge 1 will give you the element discharge 2. This is a double counter clockwise swing that will hit twice. If stored files are available, it will consume one file to do one hit of file damage to the part hit by each swing of the axe. This means if both axe hits connect, there are two hits of file damage. While the first swing doesn't do much damage, the second swing deals very good damage and can even hit targets behind you, plus this move only consumes one file for two hits. Landing both hits makes this attack much better than the element discharge one, although it is definitely slower. The second swing will move you forward slightly, but when the attack is over, the hunter will automatically take a step backwards. This backward step can be used for positioning if the situation calls for it. This backward step can be skipped if you use a roll, a slinger burst, or immediately attacking. A right mouse after element discharge 2 will lead to AED or SAED as previously mentioned. Using a left mouse after element discharge 2 will lead to rising slash.
using right mouse after rising slash leads back to element discharge 2, which is another endless loop of the same two attacks. While this is a good combo, it will risk launching your teammates in multiplayer, so here's a replacement. Instead of attacking immediately to skip the backward step, allow your hunter to complete the backward step after the element discharge too. Your next left mouse attack will now lead into smash instead of rising slash. Smash will move you forward and hit once with a downward attack, and will not launch your teammates. Adding directional keys while using smash allows you to adjust your attacking direction, the angle for direction adjustment is limited but more than your other attacks. Smash can be looped endlessly with element discharge too, much like the rising slash version. The only difference is to wait for the backward step. Smash can also be chained into rising slash with the left mouse. The element discharge too can also be accessed by using right mouse after dash slam. To start your axe attacks from sword mode, the morph slash is a very good attack and combo starter. The axe draw attack is also a great starter if your weapon is sheathed. Both of these attacks can be chained into rising slash using the left mouse or element discharge 2 using the right mouse. Finally, as previously mentioned, double mouse in axe mode will directly lead to AED or SAED. This can also be done by using double mouse after any axe attack, except for rising slash. To use it after element discharge 2, use right mouse instead of double mouse. Next up, let's look at your jumping and sliding attacks. Whenever you are mid-air, you can either use the sword jumping slash or axe jumping slash, both would hit once and build up mounting. Here's how both attacks work. If your weapon is sheathed, left mouse will give you the sword jumping slash. Guard button gives you the axe jumping slash. If your weapon is already drawn, left mouse will use the sword if you are in sword mode, and the axe if you are in axe mode. The guard button will perform a jumping morph slash that attacks by switching to the opposite mode. When you are sliding with your weapon sheathed, left mouse will perform a jumping rising slash that hits once and brings you up into the air in sword mode. From there you can either use a sword jumping slash, or axe jumping morph slash. If your weapon is drawn, using double mouse on a slope will change your forward slash into a sliding slash that hits twice. From there, you can again use the jumping rising slash and its follow-up options. Using the guard button whenever you are sliding allows you to block in case of emergencies. The mounting finisher hits twice and will consume one file for three hits of file damage if files are available. Next is the clutch claw which is only available with Iceborne. The Clutch Claw weapon attack will hit twice with the sword, before slicing through the monster multiple times using the axe while traveling straight down. The further it travels, the more potential hits it will do. You always end up in axe mode after this move. It will tenderize monster body parts in one use, and does not drop slinger ammo unless you have the Clutch Claw boost skill. Next we will look at the Slinger Burst, which is a function added in Iceborne. It uses one Slinger ammo to fire off a single spread shot equivalent to three Slinger ammo. After any axe attacks, using the Slinger Aim button will perform a Slinger Burst, which can be used in any direction to help you face anywhere you want. In axe mode, the Slinger Burst can be chained into a dash slam with the left mouse, or element discharge too with the right mouse. After successfully blocking attacks with guards and guard points, you can also use a slinger burst, as long as the knockback is not too strong. This version will keep you in sword mode, and this slinger burst can be chained into spinning slash with the left mouse, or morphs directly into element discharge too with the right mouse. Next up is about the savage axe slash which is only available with Iceborne. During the cancellation point, 
you can use the slinger aim button to cancel your AED or SAED into the savage axe slash. This move will attack with the axe while moving you backwards, putting you in axe mode. As long as you have stored files available, using the savage axe slash will activate the powered axe mode, which will show up as a new axe icon beside the shield icon. While in powered axe mode, your axe head will now spin like a chainsaw whenever you use axe attacks, adding many additional hits to every single axe attack. These additional hits are normal cutting damage, and not file damage. So they are affected by hit zones and weapon sharpness. They are also affected by affinity since they can score critical hits. The powered axe mode will passively and slowly drain files to stay powered up. For impact files, it will consume one file every 12 seconds. For power element files, it will consume one file every 18 seconds. Both of these can be extended with power prolonger. When there is only one file left, the axe icon will start flashing and you will lose the powered axe mode when no files are left. The axe stays powered up even when you sheath or switch to sword mode, but the passive file drain will continue. You can extend the time of your powered axe mode simply by storing new files, and it will restart the countdown timer for the current file consumption as well. There is no need to use Savage Axe Slash again unless you completely lose the powered axe mode, forcing you to reactivate it with the Savage Axe Slash. Aside from the passive file drain, using attacks with the powered axe mode will not consume additional files, it will follow the normal file consumption rule. So left mouse attacks still do not consume files, while right mouse attacks consume files. A charged shield is not required to activate the powered axe mode, but you should still always charge your shield before activating powered axe mode. This is because the charged shield improves the damage for all axe attacks and files, and will also improve the damage for the additional hits from powered axe. Charge your shield before activating powered axe, and not after because charging your shield will automatically consume all available files, thus deactivating powered axe. This cannot be avoided if you need to recharge your shield when it expires. Likewise, the SAED playstyle does not stack with Savage Axe playstyle because an SAED will always consume all available files and deactivate powered axe too. Here are some of the recommended axe attacks to use after activating powered axe mode. Cancelling your SAED to AED will only consume one file and prevent you from losing your powered axe, but make sure to store new files before losing your powered axe. For obvious reasons, avoid using the Savage Axe Slash without any stored files as it will not activate powered axe mode. Now let's talk about guard points. While performing certain attacks, there are specific moments where the hunter would automatically block incoming attacks with the shield if you get hit. These specific moments are known as guard points. Here are all the guard points from different attacks. A successful guard point will always leave you in sword mode, and triggering a guard point with the Savage Axe Slash will cancel the move without activating Powered Axe Mode. To know exactly when the guard points are active, you can use the Dante's Devil Sword Charge Blade or Layered Weapon. A red glow will appear around the hunter whenever a guard point is active. Compared to blocking with a regular guard, a guard point will have a stronger blocking power. Since a charged shield also improves blocking power, using a guard point with a charged shield will combine the bonus blocking power for an even stronger block. 
This will stack with blocking power improvements from the guard skill. Guard up is still needed if you want to block special attacks. As previously mentioned, successfully using a guard point with a charged shield also deals one hit of file damage to your attacker if it's near enough. These will have the same properties as your file type, so impact files can stun monsters with guard points. Since guard points are just stronger versions of guarding, you can chain them into the same moves, such as SAED or AED, which can be cancelled into Savage Axe Slash or Elemental Round Slash to charge your shield. You can also chain guard points into Slinger Bursts, which can be chained into a Spinning Slash or Element Discharge too. The most reliable guard point that will be used very often is the Sword to Axe Morph Slash Guard Point because it is active at the very start of the move. If you initially thought you could risk using an SAED or AED, but suddenly realize you will get hit, you can cancel into the Savage Axe Slash for a guard point. Finally, a quick summary of what to do with this weapon. Step 1, attack in sword mode to build up files. Step 2, store the files. Step 3, use the stored files to charge your shield. Step 4, build and store more files. Which can be used for either SAED. Or used for Savage Axe Slash to activate Powered Axe Mode. You can also charge your sword if you plan to use a lot of sword attacks. You can also double charge your files before charging your shield. For SAED, find the right openings to use them, recharge your files and repeat. For Savage Axe, attack with Axe combos but be careful with the upswings in multiplayer. Recharge files before your powered axe expires. Finally, if the fight lasts long enough, recharge your shield when it's about to expire. Since SAED and Savage Axe playstyles do not stack, choosing a specific playstyle against each monster is recommended. You can technically fight any monster with any style, but some monster matchups will favor SAED more, while others might favor Savage Axe more. While hybrid builds could work, it is better to make builds specific to each playstyle since most builds cannot fit enough skills to cater for both playstyles efficiently. Here are some of the skills that are useful for the charge blade. Feel free to pause if you would like to read. Be sure to make use of guard points when it's favorable and use dodge when it's not. Do not block every attack, and check which attack requires guard up to block, and even then some of these attacks should not be blocked due to the severe knockback and chip damage. The bad news is, your teammates attacks can and will trigger unwanted guard points if they hit your shield during guard points. Blocking teammates attacks will build up file energy as usual. Unlike other weapons, Charge Blade users will not lose files and charged weapon buffs when they faint, not that I am encouraging you to faint more. With that being said, I will end this guide here, hopefully this will help you understand the Charge Blade better, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.